Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Hey, welcome back everyone. AMC closed at 718 on Friday, down 11.58%. That means we are officially down 90.3% over the past year. At this point, it doesn't matter if you blame predatory short hedge funds, the prime banks that enable them, the regulators that ignore all their illegal activities, or even AMC senior management that has done everything in its power to give the shorts a way out of this ridiculous illegal trade. It's my belief at this stage, all AMC senior execs should return their outrageous 2022 stock bonuses and should immediately suspend stock awards for 2023. This team hasn't bought a single share in over five years and has sold over $1 billion worth to us over that same time period. So why award stock bonuses to people that only sell the stock, never buy, and could give a rat's ass about shareholder value? Adam Aaron, who in the past loves to tweet exciting hashtags to rally shareholders, like choke on that. Today we pounce, and there's gold in them thar hills, has been completely silent about the conversion, the reverse split, and the collapse of the stock price. I find this frustrating because he has no reservations about tweeting how stupid we were to fear a reverse split, even though the only good reason to perform one is to keep you from being delisted from the exchange. From mid-April, in your comments, some fear that after a reverse split, short pressure could cause the price to go back down. But you neglect that it is every bit as easy to short a stock price at $3 as it is on a stock price at $30. In my opinion, this tweet hasn't aged very well. Now let's start with this headline from Best Stocks. AMC Entertainment Holdings announces 2023 annual meeting of stockholders. From the article, AMC has announced its plans to host the highly anticipated 2023 annual meeting of stockholders on November 8th, 2023. Well, guys, that's what I call a time window. In other words, from now until 58 days from now, the company has this window to repair the damage it's done or face the wrath of shareholders face to face. This also means Uncle Frank will begin a calendar beginning today and ending with November 8th that I will populate with any event that may have an impact on the stock and the overall markets. Now remember guys, AMC was actually sued this year regarding our shareholder meetings. From Reuters, AMC shareholders sues to force company to hold annual meeting. From that article, July 17th, an AMC shareholder sued the theater chain in Delaware court on Monday, saying AMC is late in holding its annual meeting where shareholders elect members of the company's board. An individual shareholder said in the lawsuit that AMC is required by its corporate bylaws to hold a meeting each year, and that its last annual meeting was on June 16th of 2022. He asked the Delaware Chancery Court to require AMC to hold its next annual meeting by August 18th. Guys, the two most pressing risk factors, in my opinion, before the shareholder meeting are COVID and the writers and actors strike spikes in the virus, a return to mask mandates, and worst of all, the threat of lockdowns are two risk factors we must monitor because scumbags like Rich Greenfield or Ken Griffin would like nothing better than a second chance to profit from the misery of the pandemic. We must keep a close watch over the headlines. From the Wall Street Journal, COVID-19 rises again and masks are back on the table. From the New York Times, new COVID variants, what to know 
about BA286 and EG5. And then from Zero Hedge, boosted people more likely than unvaccinated to be infected, a new study finds. And here are the headlines from the writer's strike from this past weekend from Variety. AMPTP says studios are aligned and pushes WGA to respond to latest offer. From the LA Times, WGA says it's open to dealing with individual studios without AMPTP amid paralysis. And from Deadline, WGA tells members that several companies have privately expressed desire and willingness to negotiate a deal to end writer's strike. Now, guys, don't think for a minute our enemies won't use writer's strike headlines to hurt our stock. From May, CNN, movie theaters are most at risk if the writer's strike drags on, Moody says. And from Axios, Hollywood strikes put movie theaters at risk again. This story could actually turn into a minor white swan for us if this strike is resolved soon. Now let's get ready for this week and start populating the new time window calendar that begins today and ends with our shareholder meeting on November 8th. Remember, Uncle Frank is always searching for potential white and black swan events that could adversely impact our enemies being predatory hedge funds and the prime banks and brokers that enable them. From Yahoo Finance, the morning brief, key inflation data, new iPhones, and a looming deadline for contentious labor negotiations await investors in the week ahead, the first full trading week of September. The economic highlight comes on Wednesday morning when the Consumer Price Index for August will be released. Okay, that's on the calendar. The report is set to show headline inflation continues to reverse its downtrend as oil prices rise. Inflation will be in focus this week with Wall Street expecting another uptick in headline inflation. Economists forecast headline inflation rose 3.6% over the past year in August, an increase from the 3.2% rise seen in July. Prices are set to rise 0.6% on a monthly basis. An increase in energy prices is expected to drive much of the increase. And more events for next week from Wall Street Breakfast. The August CPI could put some meat back on the bones for inflation hawks looking for a village in Fed Reserve. While the Fed is largely considered to be nearing the end of its hiking cycle, the terminal rate is still up for debate. The economic calendar next week will also feature updates on retail sales, producer prices, and jobless claims. Fed Reserve speakers are in a blackout period ahead of the FOMC meeting scheduled for September 19th to 20th, which could give the economic reports extra weight. One item that's definitely going on the time window calendar for AMC occurs on October 13th. Will AMC set more food and beverage records with all the Swifties coming to the theater? A headline from CNN Business. Taylor Swift era's tour movie breaks pre-sale records at AMC Theater. From the article, Taylor Swift's concert film has already broken theater records more than a month ahead of its October 13th release. AMC Theaters said Friday that the singer's era's tour concert movie shattered records for single-day advanced ticket sales revenue with 26 million of tickets sold on Thursday. It beats the previous record holder, Spider-Man No Way Home, which sold only 16.9 million worth of tickets in one day ahead of its release in 2021. Swift's movie crushed the daily record less than three hours after tickets became available, prompting the theater chain to say it will add extra show times where possible. Movie theaters have been recovering from a pandemic era audience slump driven by summer blockbuster hits like Barbie and Oppenheimer.
right? So, but the ongoing Hollywood actors and writers strikes and the impasse with studio negotiations mean that the pool of movies making its way to the theaters could dry up over the next year. While studios typically distribute movies to theaters, AMC is acting as the era's tour film distributor in what is called an inaugural step of a new line of business for AMC Entertainment. You can see why a quick resolution to this writer's strike is important and could even morph into a minor white swan itself. I strongly recommend you keep an eye out for potential red swans from China. They are certainly not out of the woods yet on their commercial real estate crisis and neither is the United States for that matter. This past week has been buzzing with intriguing economic news from the East and West. Notable economist Paul Krugman raised alarms about China's economic stability. Meanwhile, the U.S. economy surprised with strong performance even as fears of inflation lingered. Emphasizing China's economic woes, Paul Krugman warned of a possible significant downturn unless the administration revisited its communist roots. He further pointed out that China's economic struggles are deepened by its hesitation to provide financial assistance to its citizens and businesses as China's economy risks falling into a debt deflation cycle. A Chinese economist suggested a potential remedy, devaluing the yuan. He highlighted the dangers of the dual threats of debt and deflation, which could set off a vicious cycle of dwindling demand, investment, output, and income. Guys, on the crypto side, the headlines have been insane, but the prices keep drifting and slipping for now. From Forbes, approval is inevitable. SEC Insider Prime's crypto market for $15 trillion Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP price ETF game changer. Also, deeply concerned, Fed issues serious $120 billion crypto warning as price death cross looms for Bitcoin and Ethereum. From the article, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other major cryptos are stuck in a doom loop despite payments giant Visa dropping a crypto bombshell last week. I'm going to cover the Visa thing on the next slide. Also, Binance's CEO has issued a hack warning. Now, the Bitcoin price has dropped back to where it was before BlackRock's landmark spot Bitcoin ETF filing. Uh, with some warning of Bitcoin and Ethereum in a death cross, even as the SEC revealed another shocking prediction, meaning, you know, that uh, the ETF was inevitable. Now, a top Fed Reserve official, Michael Barr, has warned he's deeply concerned about the $120 billion stablecoin market that exploded over the last few years, which is closely linked to the price of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other major cryptocurrencies. I would only add to that. We haven't seen this death cross, a major technical bearish indicator, since January of 2022. So while the Fed is warning us about stable coins and the SEC is getting its ass kicked in every courtroom trying to regulate a market that doesn't belong to it, we've got a $15 trillion ETF on the way and now these bombshells from Visa last week, the Daily Hodel. Visa's head of crypto says payments giant eyeing CBDCs, stablecoins, and blockchain networks. And from Forbes again, a huge deal. Visa reveals crypto payments bombshell that could cause Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Cardano, Dogecoin, Solana, Tron, price chaos. Interesting stuff. Since AMC's Investor Relations Department won't say it, you know Uncle Frank will. Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer has just set an atypical box office record. It's become the highest grossing film ever not to reach the top slot at the domestic box office. And since our Investor Relations Department won't report on it, you know Uncle Frank will. Denzel Washington's Equalizer 3 earned second highest Labor Day weekend box office of all time. I think that's worth reporting.
and a positive headline from Deadline. The Nun 2 answering exhibitors' prayers during strikes with 32 million plus opening. From the article, New Line's horror sequel, The Nun 2, is meeting its opening weekend expectations with a $32.6 million take. So with all the bankruptcy talk in the financial media with their hit pieces on AMC, I would like to point out what none of them want to talk about. At the close of the last quarter, we had $640 million in liquidity. That doesn't count the Barbenheimer money. And if we had to, we could sell our stakes and assets like Fathom Events or even Highcroft Mining. But put all that aside, let's look at the box off office for a moment so far in Q3. We've beaten other third quarters in 2020, 2021, and 2022 at $2.397 billion so far. Uh, now, we haven't caught 2019 yet at $2.81 billion, uh, but we've got 20 days to go. And what I'd like to point out is we had 342 releases in Q3 of 2019. And so far this quarter, we've only had 144. You know, compared to 342, we're working like we're working with like 58% less product to sell. But thanks to Barbie, we're averaging 16.6 .6 million per film versus 8.2 million per film in 2019. That's right, double. So the bottom line is if you give us the same amount of releases as you did in the past, we'll blow these numbers out of the water. Just thought you'd like to know. Moving over to Reddit's sentiment and mention tracker, all eyes are on AMC. We're in the third position behind only Bitcoin and Ethereum, but we're the number one stock on the list with 336 mentions in the past 24 hours. XRP also is on the list, bringing up the rear in the 10th spot. As you guys know, I will never tell you to buy, sell, or hold any stock or cryptocurrency. But I can tell you where I stand on this trade. I don't believe the shorts have covered. I will never sell until the shorts cover in earnest. I believe the shorts will never cover unless they're forced to. I believe it's only a white or black swan event that will cause a short covering event. I don't see a MOAS level event on the horizon at this time. And the man most responsible for that, in my opinion, is Adam Aaron. He actively suppressed the price of the stock at critical points. And all of his decisions directly benefit the shorts and not the shareholders. I am actively averaging down. I am looking for opportunities to write calls on upswings and puts on downswings, strategically hoping to improve my average cost by reinvesting any premium I'm able to capture. I will continue to support the business as well as the stock, but I will fight senior management with everything I've got until they put the best interests of the shareholders ahead of the interests of Wall Street. I believe but can't prove that the apes own the float two to three times over. With 3.8 million shareholders averaging only 300 shares each pre-split, that totals 1 billion shares right there. And I contend the average is closer to 600 each. I believe Adam Aaron is lying when he says there's no evidence of synthetic shares because he intimately knows the failure to deliver record over the past two and a half years better than we do. I believe but can't prove that there are at least 3 billion fake shares in circulation. You don't have to like me to admit I did my best throughout this entire ordeal to tell you the truth, to present the facts and give you my best theories based on those facts. No one knows or can promise the outcome of this ordeal. But I can make you this promise. I will be in the trenches fighting for the shareholders until it's over. The shareholder meeting is only 58 days away. I will be there. And I do expect the stock to be trading higher than current levels before then, unless the two threats detailed in this video worsen, that being COVID or the writer's strike. 
Hey, I want to thank you for watching, and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.